Great. Hi, everybody. Thanks, Nick. Uh, as Nick said, David Gottlieb from Trax. I'm our uh, general manager of global retail uh, for the business. Uh, I'm going to advance the slide to my slides. Uh, so who is Trax? You all know Google. Those of you that have marriages know FTD for sure. Uh, Trax is a company that at its core is applying machine learning to retail and to CPG. And we do that specifically by using our image recognition platform to take images that are captured inside of retail stores and turn those images into structured data that can be used by manufacturers, that can be used by retailers, ultimately to improve operations uh, for the benefit of the shoppers. So how do we do that? Uh, we have a fine-grained image recognition engine. And obviously, there's a lot of image recognition being done uh, in Google Cloud today. Uh, many of those um, algorithms are, are meant for sort of general purpose image recognition. We're solving a problem that is really unique in the sense that if you look at a typical grocery store, you've got about 40,000 unique SKUs, unique items that can be in the store. And so our engine has to be uh, capable of essentially differentiating and recognizing each one of those items at the UPC level, at the lowest level of detail. Uh, and so that's what we do, and we do it at scale. Uh, we're processing millions and millions of images uh, a year across hundreds of thousands of stores uh, globally. So if you think about uh, taking this problem of image recognition and applying it to retail and saying, okay, our goal is to really uh, be a partner with large retail companies. In order to do that effectively, we have to think about how do we digitize the shelf and do it at scale. Uh, and that means we have to do it uh, across lots of geographies, lots of stores, but also at a cost that works for the economic models. So as we thought about that, that led us down a couple of different pathways. Uh, the first pathway that we went down is to actually develop and design, and you can see it out in the, uh, in the industry showcase, our own uh, first of its kind uh, shelf edge camera, fixed shelf edge camera. And what's unique about it, what we couldn't find in the industry was a camera that met the price point that we needed, uh, but also had the appropriate resolution and could be installed uh, with very low impact to the store, meaning it's completely battery operated, it's completely wireless, and so we can install them very quickly and begin capturing images at retail. Uh, in addition, we've partnered with robotics companies because we also want to have an option that allows us to quickly deploy a device that gets us nearly complete coverage of a retail store uh, without the overhead of the camera. So we have that option as well. Uh, and then also we have the option of leveraging shoppers themselves. So we have one of the largest crowdsourcing capabilities out there, which means essentially we can deploy shoppers using our mobile application to just about any retail door. Uh, and that's really valuable for both retailers as they want to understand uh, conditions in the market, competitive conditions, merchandising strategies, et cetera, uh, and also for manufacturers as well. So what does it look like from a technology perspective? Uh, you, know, you heard Pushkar talk about the global scale and, and capabilities of Google Cloud, and that's really important to us, and it's one of the main reasons that, that we're partnering with them. When you think about the types of companies that we're doing business with, these are large global enterprises. Uh, things can scale very quickly for us from a demand perspective. Uh, and so it was very important that we had a partner who had the same type of global reach and coverage to support our customers in the way that we want to support them. Uh, from an architecture standpoint, we obviously have a multi-tenant uh, microservices architecture, and so we're leveraging the Google infrastructure to allow us to scale each piece independently as it's required to, to deliver the services to our customers based on the workload. Uh, one of the coolest things we're excited about uh, that we haven't, uh, haven't yet talked about today is we're actually one of the early adopters of Google's Edge TPU technology. So if you think about our architecture, uh, we've got devices deployed in store, we're capturing images all the time, much of the processing is done today in the cloud. Over time, as we exploit the eTPU capability further, we expect to move that processing out to the edge, to closer to where the images are captured. Uh, that's important for us and it's important for our customers because it means we can do things faster, we can provide them with more agility as they leverage the data to take advantage of uh, operating in the stores. So why does it matter for the industry? Uh, Pushkar and Nick both talked about use cases that are, that are very sort of near and dear to retail. And what we're really going after here is a lot of, a lot of what Pushkar talked about with respect to digitization and activation. Uh, and we totally agree the value comes from activation. So how do we, how do we enable that? Uh, the, the first piece really comes from 
if you imagine that you've instrumented a store with our technology, and now the retailer knows at any point in time exactly what the conditions of the shelf are. Right? So they know what items are in stock, they know what's missing, they know that items that may have gone out of distribution need to be reclaimed, they know if items are in the wrong location because the planogram tells them it's supposed to, have, it's supposed to be here and it's down at the bottom shelf, or it has too many facings or too few facings. So all those operational things uh, are, are the elements that we're attacking in sort of that first level of value. Uh, and we do that by essentially measuring the shelf, recognizing the images, and then reporting to the, to the retail associate in our mobile application a list of tasks that give them essentially a work list of what to go work on. And we work with the retailer to optimize that task list based on whatever metric they're trying to optimize. So that could be which item contributes the most to gross margin, which item is the most important for key customer baskets, which item is the most uh, highest velocity, et cetera. So all of that value is really being captured in sort of that first bucket. The, the second bucket, which is really exciting for us, is the idea that this whole notion of measuring the shelf and having that information over time is a new idea. And so there's metrics and measures that, that previously really weren't available in the industry that we're now making available. So imagine, for example, that if you're a retailer and you're working on a category at headquarters, and we can tell you that not only does an item go out of stock X number of times per week, but when it goes out of stock, and even, even more than that, how long does that out of stock persist? And so we're really partnering with the retailers to say, how can they use that information to make better decisions about uh, their supply chain, their, their forecasting, uh, how do they set their shelf minimum? Maybe they need a, a display to support the shelf for some more holding power. So all those questions kind of come into that second bucket uh, at headquarters. The third piece we're seeing is, again, because this is a new data asset that really wasn't available before, it's, it's really powerful when the retailers can add it to their conversation that's ongoing with their key supply partners, with the CPG companies. So as they meet on their normal cadence, whether it's a line review or a joint business planning meeting, this information can help them work together to work on those root causes of inventory management and supply chain. So a couple of quick examples. Uh, of how we're seeing this materialize in the real world. So this first example, uh, the business problem essentially is, uh, this is a grocery company here in the US, and the challenge was they advertise, like all grocery companies do, the items that are on special in their circular, in the weekly circular in the newspaper. And customers come to the store, they get excited. If, this, if the items are not available, uh, they're understandably disappointed. And so everybody wants to avoid that. And so what we did basically is we outfitted the store with our fixed shelf cameras and we're monitoring specifically the promotionally driven areas or the end caps in the store. And by doing that, we can alert the store associates on two conditions. One is when does an item on the end cap have a reduced number of facings? So when is it likely to go out of stock? And then also when has it gone out of stock? And so by doing that, they're able to actually get much more agile at replenishing those end caps during the day, uh, but also get smarter each cycle about promotional planning. And so what we've seen here is about a 10% reduction in the incidence of out-of-stocks in those promotional areas over these periods of time. Uh, similarly, in this retailer, we're focused on monitoring categories in the center store, so home, home shelf locations. And like I talked about earlier, this is a really interesting one where we're looking at a measure that really wasn't available before, which is how long does an out-of-stock persist once we identify it in the store. And so we basically are measuring out of stocks before we start to activate on that data. So before we start to share that with the associates, and we found that the average out of stock in this category lasted for about eight hours. And so you can imagine during that eight hour period, you have the possibility of disappointing quite a few shoppers. We instrumented the technology and started to activate on it, meaning we, we notified the associates about the out of stocks, and we were able to, to shrink that from eight hours down to just 30 minutes. And, and we're excited about that improvement, and we think it's meaningful, certainly from a sales perspective and a customer engagement perspective, but we also think we can go further, and so we're excited to continue that journey with this retailer. So that is the, that is the end of our, uh, our formal presentation here. Um, just to kind of wrap it up, I think you heard Pushcart talk very broadly about the capabilities of Google Cloud and how you can integrate those, those capabilities as you build applications and you, and you partner to build applications. Uh, Nick gave us some really good examples about how they've applied machine learning uh, in Google Cloud specifically to the flower business, which I found really, really interesting. Uh, and then I tried to talk a bit about some use cases that are traditional retail focused, you know, grocery and CPG. Uh, I think we can all stick around for a few minutes, so if you have questions, feel free to come by and visit with us. <laughs> <laughs>